So up close, right? We're talking about the, uh, and I hope I'm not saying this wrong, Tarahumara or Taramara, um, or the Huichol people. There is not enough uh, anthropology done to understand if these plants are used by themselves together with peyote or as a substitute when peyote can't be found. Th there's a lot that needs to go into this. What we do know is Denigri. Um, it has a tyramine of 0.003%, hordenine of 0.002%, and N-methyltyramine of 0.0002%. All of those chemical substances are known as sympathomimetics, which stimulate alpha-1 adrenic, which is adrenal, receptors, beta adrenergic receptors, and dopamine receptors in various target tissues, such as the eyes, heart, and vascular smooth muscles. So if you don't know about the Tarahumara people, they're known as a running tribe. Um, and if you look them up on YouTube, they're really interesting. Imagine these people who don't have cars, they don't keep track of time, they live in the middle of the desert, they're these very small communities that live entirely organic lifestyles. When they eat substances like these plants, they are already so clean and so pure. They don't have that pork meat in you and that alcohol that you try or the social media that you try to have a dieta from before you do sacred medicine. So a lot of our Western systems, our mind, bodies, and souls are really gummed up. We're actually, we're so gummed up that it's hard for us to be open enough or gentle enough or clean enough or pure enough to connect with these plants in the first place which is why a lot of people recommend um, a diet, a dieta from sex, red meat, alcohol, pork especially, foods that are heavily processed, right? What if the people in the deserts that already are that light and that clean, I think these plants probably affect them in much greater ways than they do us in the Western world. And so I think that's uh, something else uh, that should be considered. Areocarpus rotatus is known as swuri by the huichol. And the swuri means false peyote. And it's known, or legend has it, that uh, if you are led to this plant, uh, it's because you're being uh, led away from peyote because your spirit is unpure. Uh, why might that be? Uh, because it's known that when you eat this plant or a plant very close to it, uh, which is Fisseratus, uh, Tsunami, um, that these plants, instead of bringing you to the light, where a lot of peyote does, they bring you to hell. And in our Western mindset, you automatically think, oh, that's a bad thing. <laughs> it's like, well, if you're trying to exercise your demons, if you're working on shadow work, what do you think hides in the shadows? Where do you think that stuff is? It's not upstairs. It's downstairs in the basement. It's in the muggy, swampy area that you generally don't want to explore. It's rough down there. There's clowns. Uh, there's witches. Uh, there's jokers that are very tricky and try to jump into your consciousness. And if you don't have certain protections, they do. But sometimes shamans understand that something evil or wicked that's in you that needs to be exercised out, you need to meet it where it's at, in the basement. And so sometimes in Wicho culture, it's known that this plant should only be reserved for the shaman of the community because it is too dangerous and too intense to explore and experience unless you are very strong. And we're not talking physically, we're talking psychedelically. You have to be strong to be able to navigate hell and fight clowns and witches while you're down there and still be conscious of the mission that you have, which is to look for certain things within the shadow work and do something about it while you're there. That's not easy work. That takes a, a true roadman, a true shaman um, to be able to do. Um, and so th these are some interesting ideas about these plant types.